Good morning, Saints. Good to see everyone here this morning. Those of you online, welcome. Good to have everybody. Our worship service is up on the screen. It's in your bulletins. Uh, and we continue on in this season after Pentecost, uh, where it's really about discipleship. And uh, again, we continue on with these uh, these texts in Luke about uh, the, uh, uh, about what it means to be a disciple. And, and this, this morning, the gospel lesson you're going to hear, it's almost going to sound like Advent, like the Advent text where you get the be on the watch, be prepared. You're going to hear those same kinds of words. Um, but again, it's going to be used perhaps in a little bit different context. Uh, and so this morning I'm going to talk about that being prepared we are here in our first Sunday of August. And at the end of this month, August 28th, we're going to have a picnic after worship. It's going to be a potluck picnic, so you bring your favorite picnic food. And we're going to have a picnic here. We'll have set up for indoor and outdoor. And uh, if you've got uh, yard games that you like to play, please bring them. Uh, and we will enjoy some time together. Let us begin worship. Please stand. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart, we have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy on us. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. O oh, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us. O oh, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us. O oh, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, O oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, O oh, Lord, have mercy. Gloria, 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 Glory to God on high. Gloria, 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 Glory to God on high. And on earth, peace to God's people, Glory to God. And on earth, peace to God's people, Glory to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> the first reading is from Genesis 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord, the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Hebrews 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the, words were, the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abram obeyed when he was called to set out for a place 
that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he, he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, even <clears throat> because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they'd been thinking of the land they had left behind, they would have opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of our Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, how many of you remember if you had a child at their birth and in the weeks that kind of follow, when you heard the comment in one way or another, don't blink because that's how long it will be before they're off to college. Or something like that. I can remember it. And I, remember, I, I think at the time when people would say that, I would think, ha, well, you knew what? <laughs> now I, I see Ian stepped out so he doesn't have to hear this. <laughs> Ian's now in his own apartment. Occasionally we see him for dinner. It's like he got his driver's license yesterday. But 
But that's life, isn't it? Dr. Seuss has this little ditty. Well, actually, that was yesterday. The great American poet, Dr. Seuss writes, how did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. My goodness, how the time has flown. How did it get so late so soon? We know that life is short, and yet we spend our lives as if we have nine of them, right? We give too many of our days to not nearly enough. We act as if life is always going to begin tomorrow. The real part of our life is on the way, but first... First, we have to get past a couple of things, right? We have some unfinished business. We have, still have time to serve towards something. We have a debt to be paid, a responsibility to take care of, and then life can begin. However, we do recognize, we do recognize how wrong it is to throw a life away. And yet we don't see how sinful it is to do the same thing an hour at a time. Life is wasted hour by hour, day by day, in a thousand small, uncaring ways. Have you ever been on a vacation? And wherever it may be, there's always those, those one or two or handful of places or things or people or events or places... <laughs> that you want to go to, that you want to see, that is kind of some of the purpose, like some of the purpose of why you should be there. And yet, even when we, in the midst of trying to figure out what to do, what to see, how long to be there, sometimes other things happen, don't they? Some things like, you know what? It's a really hot day out. Maybe we got to go get milkshakes. Not a bad thing. But it's our choices. It's our choices that make those vacations what they are. It's our choices that make our lives what they are, day by day. Life is too short for microwave pizza. Life is too short to keep waiting for a special occasion or a better day. Life is too short to sit around, moping, choosing despair, worrying what other people think. Life is too short to complain about those who you don't like, look for revenge, or try to change someone's opinion about you. Life is too short to be bitter over things you can't change, want to go back to what was, or always do the same thing. Life is too short to be bored, to always blend in, or to sit in the corner while the band is playing. Life is too short to skip church. L leave good words unsung. Or be afraid to pray. Life is too short to intend to live a new life, but never get around to it. We shouldn't give ourselves to things that are less than God's best or surrender ourselves to the world's values because life is short. Jesus' disciples haven't figured this out yet. They act like they have forever. They worry about the wrong things. They ch chase what's unimportant. They run around preoccupied with details, forgetting why they started doing what they were doing in the first place. 
But Jesus knows that time is short. In fact, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to die. There's a crowd of thousands gathering in Jerusalem, but Jesus says this to his disciples. Don't be afraid. You have been given the kingdom. God has given you life itself. You don't have to be frightened. Be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourselves a bank that doesn't need a bailout. A bank that can't go bankrupt. A bank you can bank on. The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Earthly possessions don't matter much when you realize that your whole life is in God's hands. God gives us eternity, so all the stuff in the world is unnecessary. Only God's treasures are worth clinging to. That's a hard one. But what is it that we cling to? What is it that we choose to have and to do? Stay awake. Keep the lights on. Listen to this story. Some servants are busy running around doing unimportant stuff, not giving a lot of thought to the master who's gone off to get married. But when he comes back, even if it's the middle of the night, what a celebration they'll have. He'll put on an apron, give them a seat at the table, and wait on them hand and foot because he'll want them to see how happy he is. He'll want them to share in his joy. Are they ready? Do they remember why they work in the master's house? Do they understand the whole point is to share in the master's joy? To live in the master's love? Or are they busy with other matters that keep them from seeing what really matters? Don't be distracted. Just when you, less, just when you least expect it, God will show up. God's pleasure is to give us God's presence. God's, God wants this gift to be celebrated. God wants us to understand that through sorrows and trials and whatever comes, we're going to be okay. Jesus calls us to amazing lives. Jesus tells the disciples to give up wanting more, share the wealth, be constantly awake for God's presence. Jesus describes a life of loving one's enemies, turning one's cheek, serving others. God invites us to live in Christ's way, knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that despite what we might think of ourselves or what others might think about us, we are deeply loved by the one who created us. The value of our lives is not to be measured by our bank account, not by how we look, not by our standing in our community, and not even by the amount of good that we've done, but simply this, that God values us highly enough to give us joy, to give us the kingdom. And we live that life out of gratitude. We live in the way of Christ, the way in which, by faith, forgiveness triumphs over revenge, hope over despair, joy over sorrow, generosity over stinginess, and love over apathy. God calls us to be watchful, for the ways in which joy is breaking in to us. Christ is always coming. The clouds are always descending. Stay alert to how God draws near. In spiritual awakening that touches us in the heart that we forgot that we had. God draws near in the thing of beauty that reminds us that the world is more than just 
the ugliness that we can see sometimes. Who knows what form it will take. This reign of God that is always drawing near. Be watchful. Look for it in the midst of all that you do, in the choices that you make, in the actions that you take. Wake up. Wake up to whatever life is bringing you. Wake up to pain because we can't be healed until we admit that we're hurt. Wake up to the love we won't let ourselves feel because we're afraid our hearts will break. Wake up and understand that when we look for God, we hear the ticking of the clock and understand that every minute is filled with possibilities. Our job is to stay awake. To stay awake to everything that life brings us so we don't miss it when God comes. Life is short. So live every day as if it were your last. Because someday you'll be right. Life is short. So wake up, stay alert, be prepared, light the lamps, get ready, listen for the knock, answer the call, serve where you're sent. Life is short. So do what you love to do and give it your best. Whether it's business or teaching or medicine, if you don't love what you're doing and can't give it your best, think seriously. Think about getting out and finding what makes you happy. Life is short. So recognize that today is the only day you have. Eat dessert first. <laughs> Life is short, so go to church and worship, stay awake, and sing. Life is short, so listen to the people you love. Tell them how much they mean to you. Life is short, so recognize that every day is a special occasion. Do something interesting. Have some fun. Choose to be happy. Life is short, so forgive. Look past the faults of others just like you hope they'll do it for you. Life is short, so surround yourself with gracious people. Hug your friends. Care for someone you haven't cared for. Life is short, so be courageous. Take a chance. Live so that when your life flashes before your eyes, You'll have plenty to watch. Life is short, so embrace the possibilities. Try something new. See that every day is an opportunity. Dream, but don't just dream. Follow those dreams. Life is short, so breathe and think deeply. Don't give your heart to that which won't fill your heart. Make the changes. That will make a difference. Life is short, so be an evangelist. Tell a friend how God's love has changed your life. Be a person who talks about Jesus. Pray hard. Believe in Christ with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Celebrate the love of God. Get a life. Because it's later than you think. And life is short. Amen. <laughs>
Proclaim our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with our spirit, equipped your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, gracious God, let your loving kindness be upon our creation dwelling among us and sustaining our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence, For places that are unsafe in our world, for the Ukraine, for just many who are struggling, raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. We lift up Amanda, Tim, Norm, and Audrey, those who have not, who have lost everything in natural disasters, those living near William Lake who are suffering from respiratory distress, those who are suffering from heat exhaustion, and we also lift up those in the hospital, struggling with mental illness, on the streets. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. What more do the people of this congregation pray? For peace in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us in trust in our promise of new life. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another.
Christ thou shalt choose. Make my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless grace. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. Happy feast of your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field. And equip us to bear fruit for the goodness of all, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all things are now ready. You may be seated. 
This morning we have wafers. If you'd like a non-gluten wafer, we have those. Just let me know. And then as you go to the wings on the pedestals or the trays, and there's wine and grape juice uh, in the trays.
Please stand. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So one announcement this morning is I think you have an extra page to get to the last hymn this morning. So just be aware. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say um, we are really blessed to have a congregation like this with your thoughts and prayers, your, your cards and everything. It's really touched our heart. Lynn is doing very well. Uh, so take the confidence and I just wanted to let everybody know she's doing very well. Thank you for the call. Both of us, actually. And thank you very much. Yes. Man, prayers for continued healing. Excellent. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Thank you.